ओके वेलकम टू जेसी कनेक्ट इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द क्लोराइड्स वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द क्लोराइड एक्सपेरिमेंट सो वी कंप्लीटेड द फर्स्ट वन दैट इज द क्लोराइड्स वी कंप्लीटेड पीएच वी कंप्लीटेड then uh, conductivity then uh, uh, turbidity we completed then uh, completed the alkalinity then uh, the hardness then uh, i iron will do it today then uh, we completed the dio experiment we completed the chlorides okay so hardly one or two experiments are remaining okay today we'll try to cover the iron okay um so as for the iron is concerned okay so um iron is exist in the two forms okay that is in uh, fe2 plus form okay fe3 plus form this we can call it as ferrous this we can call it as ferric see 3 plus it is ferric 2 plus is ferrous okay and it is an uh, mm, very important component in uh, drinking water first i can say it is very important component in drinking water see if iron sufficient is not there okay so it has own uh, uh, standard that is <coughs> it should be 0.3 mg per liter as for is code as for is 10500 and 2012 okay it should be 0.3 mg it should not exceed okay even uh, some of the people who are having the iron deficiency remember iron deficiency it is the whatever the uh, the standard they have given 0.3 mg there is a for overall we can call it as a common people but those who are having the iron deficiency you can go up to 0.6 mg per liter they can take up to 0.6 mg per liter okay and remember that um it should not be zero also okay we require our body some iron is required okay so then if more iron it is very dangerous also okay that uh, we have to concern okay um so i already said that it is iron exists in the natural water both in ferric and ferrous forms okay normally the conversion of for example conversion from fe2 plus to fe3 plus we can call this as oxidation process okay this process we can call it as fe3 plus this process we can call it as oxidation process so naturally what will happen is that this conversion always it is going to happen okay when oxidation is happening then reduction is also going to happen okay sometimes if iron assume that if it is there in fe2 plus form okay so once it is exposed once it is exposed once it is exposed to an environment so it will go to fe3 plus means the oxidation process is going to happen the oxidation process is going to happen means once this fe forms which, which is going to which is going to Uh, exposed to an environment definitely it is going to fe3 plus okay see what we are talking about uh, the corrosion process it is an oxidation process okay see, there is a conversion of from p2 uh, plus to fe2 o3 fe2 o3 if you see the valency of this it will be fe3 plus okay conversion of oxides of iron it is nothing but corrosion corrosion is also an one oxidation process 
okay then in drinking water so always we have to talk about here in drinking water itself okay see what will happen is that whether you have to check it in what form of iron it is there okay and determination is also very important see uh, in water if uh, fe2 plus is there okay it is uh, very difficult to determine remember okay it is very difficult to determine if it is there in fe3 plus form i see if it is there in fe3 plus form then it is very easy to determine how much concentration of iron is there in water so suppose if it is fe2 plus form assume that if it is there in fe2 plus form then you have to what you have to go for first oxidation process then you have to determine it okay you have to convert this into fe3 plus and you have to determine it okay so that is the uh, formula we have to follow then what method uh, we are following in our laboratory so we are following in our laboratory that is a potassium thiocyanate method the method is the potassium potassium thiocyanate method see one more method is there that is phenothrolin method <coughs> phenothrolin okay the method we can call that as a phenothrolin not throlin okay so this method <coughs> normally it is used to determine fe2 plus and this is for fe3 plus <coughs> okay normally in uh, most of the water will be there in fe <coughs> fe3 plus form in surface water if you are determining the iron follow the method of potassium thiocyanate method suppose if you are determining in the ground water in most of the ground water it will be in the form of fe2 plus remember in the ground water because the ground water is not exposed to the environment it is always in a closed condition okay it is not exposed to any an atmospheric environment see any anything which is going to expose to the atmospheric environment normally <coughs> the <coughs> oxidation process is going to be predominant <coughs> as i say that when oxidation process is happening the reduction process is also going to happen okay sometimes what will happen is that you can find um, if you store more iron containing water there is a, uh, the formation of iron bacteria inside it and <clears throat> you can see the small, small slime layer of the uh, the red uh, that it is nothing but the iron bacteria okay on the top of the water surface if you find any um, iron um, slimes or slime layer okay that is nothing but it is a formation of iron bacteria and normally the ferrous iron is dissolved in water and the ferric iron readily settles and can be removed by settling okay the presence of iron in water is not harmful for health but it renders the water turbid and unacceptable for to an aesthetic point it causes strains in laundries plumbing fixtures hence the desirable limit is 0.3 mg per liter but tolerable limit is 1 mg iron can be easily determined by colorimetric method see what i said is that potassium thiocyanate method itself is a colorimetric method colorimetric method means here we are going to develop the color by color comparison we can say that this is the concentration this is the concentration so uh, in our laboratory we are following the potassium thiocyanate method as i already discussed that okay. and uh, he already um, uh, say that he is not harmful for health okay presence of iron but it should not be more also okay it has its own uh, tolerable limit is there that we have to always consider okay if it is 14 or 15 mg per liter 16 mg per liter of course uh, there is a imbalance definitely it is going to happen in our body if it is more than the required limit so as far as possible iron should be maintained in a, um, in a standard limit only then what is the significance <clears throat> 
iron imparts a color to water and makes it unacceptable for consumption okay so though iron has no harmful effect on health its presence may help in the proliferation of iron reducing bacteria in the active core and pipelines and imparts a bad taste and odor to its water c1 we are saying they are admitting that uh, the more iron is not uh, harmful to the health but uh, still if more iron is there definitely it um, give a bad taste and the odor as for our recommendations sir, odor and the taste that we already discussed okay odor water should be odorless and it should be tasteless okay it should not be for example tasteless in the sense some of uh, the micronutrient should be there okay it should not be like uh, distilled water but uh, for example uh, if it is like uh, more uh, salt water okay that should not be there so if you salt if you take it you will give a, a little bit taste okay but other than the microorganisms it should not give any uh, unobje unobjectionable taste okay if you are uh, uh, allergy with any of the taste okay that should not give any of the water okay so that the thing has to be maintained as far as iron is concerned okay but still uh, <clears throat> i the doctors what the doctors will do that okay uh, if iron deficiency is there in your problem okay they will encourage you to drink the iron containing the water okay that too if it is very less in your body assume that in blood blood iron is very iron content is very important because it will um, uh, increase the hemoglobin content hemoglobin hemoglobin content okay if iron deficiency is there of course the hb hemoglobin content it is also less see normally uh, 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 the healthy human beings if you see the hemoglobin content they will say it is 8 to uh, 10 or 8 to 12 okay this is a normal range of an any human if it is goes below 8 even if it is goes below 10 also we can say we can go with uh, the iron deficiency we can call it as moderate iron deficiency if it is goes below 8 okay if it is goes below 8 then the doctors will go for the directly iron injections okay the iron injections to increase the hemoglobin content okay if the normally the iron injections of uh, the concentration of 100 milligram per liter just imagine that okay the limit is says that it is 0.3 milligram per liter but the iron uh, iron injection concentration just assume that it is 100 milligram per liter where is 100 milligram per liter where is in 0.3 milligram means that much why they are directly giving for iron injections because we require the iron concentration in blood okay even if you drink the water uh, uh, containing the 100 milligram per liter just assume that if you drink the water containing 100 milligram per liter iron it won't give that much because first whatever the drinking water it will go to intestine first then it will go to the blood later so if it converts from uh, uh, the <coughs> the iron containing uh, from intestine to blood it will take its own time for example 15 days 20 days one month or one year it will take okay to suddenly if you want to increase the hemoglobin content so directly they will in, uh, inject the uh, iron concentration of 100 milligram per liter 120 milligram per liter uh, so that immediately the hp can be raised within a uh, two to three days or one week the hp can be improved but through the drinking water if you are taking the iron um, it is not that much improvement will be there it will take its own time to take it see even if you take 100 milligram per liter uh, in drinking water so 70 to 80 percent of the ir what it will happen is that it will be uh, it will be through your uh, uh, the human faces what you can call it as see it will be released okay only 20 percent will be utilized and 80 percent will be given up because our intestine will not survive for 
the 100 milligram per liter of uh, the iron concentration okay our intestine will take up to 10 milligram per liter okay remaining it will release okay remaining it will release okay that you should uh, take care of that so that is why iron play a very important role in uh, the most in drinking water as well as in our human health then what uh, principle we are following uh, uh, in the potassium thiocyanate method we are following as i said that we are following potassium thiocyanate method in this whatever the ferric iron that is a fe3 plus okay it will combine with the thiocyanate ion to form a red color ferric thiocyanate complex okay when it is going to come consume uh, combined with your ferric ion combined with the thiocyanate ion so it will form the red, red colored ferric thiocyanate okay so that is determined with in a uv spectrophotometer <coughs> uv spectrophotometer at 510 nanometer <laughs> Five ten nanometers. <clears throat> so then, uh, how this U spectrophotometer uh, is going to work? I'll explain in the laboratory itself. Okay. Uh, as for river knowledge now, so you have electromagnetic spectrum. You might be knowing electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum. If you see that electromagnetic spectrum, uh, just go through once before. Uh, so here. Uh, you have um, uh, UV region, VIS region, and infrared region. So as it move from uh, left to right, okay, the wavelength will decrease. Okay, the wavelength will decrease. See, from UV region normally it will be UV region. It will be from 190 nanometer to uh, around 360 nanometers. So VIS region is. Um, from 361 to around 700 nanometers so then uh, infrared ir region it will be from roughly 701 to you can say 1100 nanometers and below this so this always it will be assumed that vu vis and ir region so in between this uh, if you see this section so you will get you will get uh, the laser so you have alpha beta gamma rays and x rays okay. in this region you can find the uh, overall what i said laser laser alpha beta and gamma that you can that you can say okay so laser alpha beta gamma these are all below 190 nanometers so below below 190 nanometers okay see so then uh, uh, see then where exactly you are measuring 5 nanometers it will come in your visible region okay so whatever the instrument what we are using the uv spectrophotometer okay we have to set the instrument for 5 10 nanometers then 5 10 nanometers containing light is going to is going to hit to and the uh, the sample containing iron okay there it will give the value in terms of milligram per liter okay then how exactly it will be determined so first what you have to do is that prepare a series of standards of okay 100 ml by accurately weight the 0 to 2 point for example what i'll do is that i'll take nestler's tube of 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 Okay, how to prepare the iron standard solutions, known iron standard solutions. So means I know that in all Nestler's tubes, you have to consider the Nestler's tubes only, Nestler's tubes, which is having the 100 ml capacity. See for the first one, zero milligram per liter. Second one, 0.5, one, 1.5, two, and 2.5 milligram per liter see for the first is a zero means it is a distilled water okay then so the second one 0.5 milligram per liter you have to add 
second one 1 mg per liter third one 1.5 mg per liter two 2.5 mg series of standard solutions standard solutions means i know that i have added 0.5 mg per liter so this is why we are doing it that first you have to calibrate the equipment okay you have to prepare the prepare the calibration curve calibration curve first we have to measure the um, absorbance normally whatever the spectrophotometer or uh, the whatever the spectrophotometer it will works on the principle of beers and lambert's law beers and lambert's law see what it will say beers and lambert's law whatever the absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration okay for example we prepared the standard solutions of 0.5 mg per liter 1 mg per liter 1.5 2 2.5 we prepared it these are the concentrations see this is directly proportional to the absorbance what see what i'll do is that i'll prepare the standard solutions then i'll take the sample from 0 mg per liter 0.5 mg per liter 1 1.5 2 2.5 .5. it is there i'll take it and i'll measure the absorbance okay measure the absorbance of the solutions in in uh, that uh, spectrophotometer okay i'll take the sample then i'll place in that spectrophotometer and i'll measure the absorbance then if you find out the absorbance for example 0.5 mg per liter i may get 0.1 here i'll get 0.2 here i'll get 0.3 here i'll get 0.4 and here i'll get 0.5 okay suppose uh, it means that whatever the concentration okay you have prepared is correct means i should get the graph like this okay if you prepare the concentration versus absorbance i should get exactly 45 degree straight line okay i should get directly 45 degree straight line then means whatever you have prepared that is correct whatever the uh the uh, solutions standard solutions you have prepared that is is correct so this kind of a calibration curve we have to plot first then how exactly it will be prepared i have to go with 0.1 0.2 0.3 0.4 0.5 0.6 mg per liter sorry uh, 0.5 1 1.5 2 2.5 mg per liter of iron standard solutions we have to prepare first then every time what i have to do is that i have to place the sample and i have to measure the absorbance okay then plot the graph versus the concentration in milligram per liter and the absorbance okay absorbance has no unit then once you plot it and if you plot a curve okay you will get the straight line exactly it is 45 degree exactly it is 45 degree you will get it so once you get uh, once you prepare this okay then place the unknown sample solution unknown sample solution for example in in the in river water if you are measuring the uh, iron so bring that uh, river water sample and measure again and find out the absorbance find out the absorbance suppose if you got the absorbance at this point so then plot this curve and measure at exactly this okay where exactly you get that will be milligram per liter as the fe2 plus or fe3 plus okay then how we have to prepare the standard solutions so what you have to do is that zero distilled water you have to add 0.5 mg per liter of iron 1 mg per liter 1.5 mg per liter 2 and 2.5 mg per liter iron you have to add it then each of this what you have to do is that for each what you have to do is that 4 ml of 4 normal hcl 4 ml of 4 normal hcl and 5 ml of 5% kcl okay that you have to add 5 ml of 5% kcl you have to add for each for this distilled water second one iron solution 4 ml of 4 normal hcl plus 5 ml of 5% kcl here also uh, 1 mg per liter of iron solution then um, 4 ml of 4 normal hcl then 5 ml of 5% kcn okay similarly here 1.5 mg per liter of uh, uh, 
uh, higher solution plus 4 ml of uh, 4 normal SL and 5 ml of 5% KCN you have to add. Okay. Then make it up to 100 ml using again distilled water. In the first 0 milligram per liter, we are not adding any iron solutions. It is 0 milligram per liter only we are adding, only we are adding 4 ml of 4 normal HCl and 5 ml of 5% KCN. Okay. Then <clears throat> once it is completed, make it up to 100 ml using the distilled water. And keep it for about uh, half an hour so that the color is going to develop. Okay. So whatever the fe2 plus or whatever it will be there it is going to convert and it is going to build a color okay you can see the uh, increasing order of color you can see the increasing order of color from left to right side okay here also you can see that the increasing order of the color okay the color is going to increase from left to right okay so once it is done then build this calibration curve build this calibration curve then once it is done okay take the unknown uh, sample and measure the absorbance once you measure the absorbance find out how much absorbance you are getting based on that you will find out the um, iron concentration with the help of this calibration curve and always this has to be measured in 510 nanometers okay so you have to set the instrument for 510 nanometers. So in that spectrophotometer, equipment is there. So you can measure uh, the many elements, manganese or calcium or whatever it is, from 190 to around 700 or 1100. It depends on the kind of equipment you will use it. Okay. This is how uh, we are going to measure the iron in the in our laboratory so uh, as i already explained plot the calibration curve so then um, take the little sample whose iron content is to determined in an slr tube add 4 ml then for the sample also remember remember for sample also you have to add 4 ml of 4 normal hcl hcl plus 5 ml of 5 percent kcl remember this okay or even for sample also you have to use it and whenever you are placing the sample in a um, uh, in a that um, use spectrophotometer okay uh, all the things has to be added before placing the sample okay. then measure the results in milligram per liter so this is about the iron so whenever you will come to the laboratory i'll explain it how exactly how to place the sample and all those things but preparation you have to see this video only and you have to prepare it okay